What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Today is a little bit different. I wanted to revisit a topic that I personally was very interested in uh, definitely in the beginning of the year, and it seems like it's kind of died off or the interest is no longer around it anymore. I think that what happens is in crypto, we kind of get these like buzzwords, you know, like first it's transactions per second, scalability, right? Then we're looking at different mechanisms like sharding and this and that, atomic swaps, remember? And at one time, it was interoperability. Now you don't hear too many projects speaking about it as much, but the truth is is that it's absolutely necessary to have interoperability, especially moving forward. When you actually think about it, when you look at all these different projects, what they're aiming to do, their solutions, right? You have VeChain, they're focusing on supply chain logistics. Neo's trying to be the smart economy. You have IOTA dealing with internet of things. Stellar wanting to be the global payment network, right? So we have all these different projects doing all of these different things, but a lot of them are moving off of Ethereum after they're utilizing the crowd sales and they're starting their own main nets. Well, the problem with all of these main nets is that they have no way of communicating with each other, okay? So basically, eventually at some point, we are going to need some type of blockchain glue, essentially, for lack of better words, to create an interoperability between all of of these different projects because right now these main nets are basically what's referred to as data silos they're just sitting there out in the open within their own contained little ecosystem everything is fine right i mean komodo offers blockchain as a service where you're allowed to basically copy the blockchain same thing with a chain you can fork off of a chain create a copy essentially and then you'll be able to intercommunicate with each other you can create side chains you can do things like what elf is trying to do but ultimately you can really only communicate within that contained ecosystem so i thought it was kind of uh appropriate to revisit some of the projects that are really trying to get this interoperability solution solved. And I wanted to hear a little bit about what you guys thought about it, what projects in particular you were kind of bullish on, which ones you're rooting for, who you think has the best advantages. So I wanted to kind of dive into it and we're going to get to that right now. So I started looking at this article from, well, let's see when this is from. This is from January earlier this year, and it was the opportunity for interoperable chains of change. And this was an article that came out on Coindesk. Now, some of the things that I will talk about today are mentioned in here. We have Polkadot, Cosmos, Block Collider, for example. So they talk about the need for cross-chain messaging. They discuss things like Casper, FFG, parametizing, etc. But one of the key things at this point in time was discussing atomic swaps and things like right here, for example, you have decentralized exchange DEXs such as 0x and Omizego that come into play, right? So unfortunately, right now, we don't have that full scale interoperable solution. So I wanted to dive into some of the projects that I think are doing very well right now currently, and I decided to do this basically just for simplicity. We'll just go top to bottom. Uh, highest market cap to low mark, no, lowest market cap. Okay, guys? So, moving on, the first one is, I thought we would just take this as a giant bundle. We have the Interoperability Alliance, which is Icon, Wanchain, and Aeon. So we're just gonna talk about all three of those guys right now, and then we'll move on to some of the others as well. So obviously, the first that we have is Icon. Now, you guys know I'm a huge fan of Icon on this channel, so let's just get it right out of the way. So essentially, guys, Icon is building an application platform and an interchain communication protocol. They're working on a comprehensive healthcare, university, education, and all these different types of blockchain-based ID verification systems, which could eventually be used for a slew of different services. Now, don't forget that they also have the loop chain, okay? So that's been around. They've already been doing it as well. Don't forget that governance is also an issue that's been a major problem among blockchains. And I personally think that ICON has a well-thought-out structure that rewards network participants for contributions according to their AI algorithm, which is developed by their parent company, Daily Intelligence, all right? So the other thing, too, is ICON has been hitting their milestones. Now, although people have argued that you know, they have been waiting on the release of the white paper and they haven't quite disclosed the staking opportunities, they have 
had a tremendous quarter two with a lot of partnerships and they definitely are pushing the forefront in interoperability in my personal opinion. Now if we move on to the next coin we do have Wanchain. They are also part of the interoperability alliance as well. Wanchain is a little bit different though. In a sense they're kind of going for the gold. They're going for everything right? So they're dealing a lot with finances and things of that nature but they're working with cross-chain communication. They also have an application platform and they're really 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 worried about your privacy, okay? Your uh, anonymity. So the team has a strong network of connections, obviously being part of the Interoperability Alliance. And technically speaking, they have enough uh, experience as good as anyone to be able to basically push forward in this space. So Wanchain is definitely somebody to look out for as well. This finally brings us to the third of the Interoperability Alliance. So we have Aeon. So Aeon stands out a little bit. But I think the thing that's really interesting about Aeon is their long-term plans on integrating AI into the consensus model. So don't forget, Aeon was created by Nuco, and that's a Canadian company that uh, is basically developing enterprise blockchains. One interesting fact about Nuco is that Nuco has Vitalik Buterin as an advisor, and it has connections to both government and major corporations in Canada, which could potentially give Aeon the upper hand, okay? And since interoperability protocols are aiming to establish standards, government connections and experience with regulatory compliances, it's a pretty big plus for Aeon, guys. So moving on to the next project, we have a good old-fashioned ARC. Now, I don't mean to say ARC is old-fashioned. I just mean ARC has been around for a while. They've definitely been working on interchain communication as long or possibly even longer than a lot of these other guys. Uh, ARC was a huge, huge project I was following actually before I even started my channel, before I even started YouTube. Uh, ARC was one that I definitely was very interested in. The thing with ARC is they're a super ambitious project. I mean, they are trying to literally just be the blockchain of blockchain. They're trying to do everything, which some people might say that a jack of all trades is a master of none type of thing that's been going on. But, you know, like for example, in addition to their interchain communication, they want to automate the creation of new blockchains integrated with their system via a push button blockchain deployment. They're also nearly finished integrating support for a wide variety of programming languages, which is really cool. They're trying to be developer friendly. This is tended to make them more accessible for developers who may favor particular languages over others. So, you know, that was one of the advantages speaking on just regular blockchains like Neo is that they really cater to all these different developers, which could be a potential upper hand for ARC moving forward. Now, one of the projects that I personally think has been just totally not really getting the attention that they deserve is BlockNet. BlockNet is one of those projects where they don't really do a lot of promotion or marketing. They kind of just put their head down and just sort of go to work. I actually had an opportunity to do an interview with Hani Abu from BlockNet. If you guys haven't taken a look at it, just go back in my videos a little bit ago, you'll find it. So BlockNet is essentially developing a fully decentralized exchange as a solution for interchain communication. So there's essentially four components to an exchange, right? You have deposits, order broadcasting, order matching, and an actual exchange of coins. BlockNet is working on decentralizing all of them. And if successful, it would be the first DEX to do this. So the block, okay, which is the, their currency, will be required to become a node in the network and thereby collect fees, or essentially it's a proof of stake model. So BlockNet has already released a beta version of their DEX. According to the developers, it has been optimized to serve as infrastructure. This means users could basically use BlockNet via other apps without even knowing it. Also, I wanted to point out they do have the X router that recently came out as well, which basically allows you to go and look at all the other blockchains without actually having to download all of the data, which could be a total pain. We know this. So I think BlockNet is definitely one of the projects to keep a lookout in the future. I do like projects that just focus on the tech and they don't focus on the hype as much. So moving on to the next one on the list, this is the lowest one, unfortunately. At the time of making this video, I think the market cap is lower than 10 million dollars. So this is Lambdin with a you know ticker of Tau. So their focus is on providing development tools for entire blockchains, but chain-to-chain -chain communication is also a major component of the project. I remember they kind of put a chart out a little bit a while ago where they were talking about the differences between Lambdin as as 
you know, compared to these other projects. So Lambda, they're developing a smart contract repository, which can be integrated with basically most of the popular blockchains, right? So you have like Ethereum, EOS, uh, Neo, I believe Lisk, and a bunch of others at this point. Not really too sure uh, why Lambda ha hasn't really been performing as well as the others uh as far as market cap is concerned, but I guess we could, we're just kind of waiting for that announcement. You know, the team, they have a strong team. They've hit a number of significant milestones, you know, including successful atomic swaps. So yeah, we just basically have to see what, what comes out of Tamden, uh, Lambden as well. Now, the final one that I'm loading, uh, put on, putting on here right now is because I don't really know where the market cap currently is on Metronome because Metronome doesn't have its market cap listed on coin market cap yet, but essentially Anyway, one of the key uh, team members of Metronome is Jeff Garzik. So, okay, you may have your opinions on Jeff Garzik. I don't know. You guys could say that's a good or bad thing. I'm not taking any sides. I'm just saying that they do have Jeff Garzik on the team. And Metronome kind of stands out among its, the other interoperability projects with a plan to create tokens that can simultaneously exist on multiple blockchains. So essentially, this means that the tokens would theoretically be able to survive the death of a blockchain. So this is pretty rad very different. This gives Metronome, uh, I don't know if this is first mover advantage. I can't 100% say that they're the first ones to do this, but this is the first time I've ever heard of something like this. So that unique aspect of Metronome could potentially be something that may interest a lot of people moving forward. Are they going to be the go-to solution for interoperability? We, we don't know. Time, time will have to tell about that. Now, moving on to projects that are not currently on exchanges. The first one, and I just did this in market cap based on the token sale. So whoever had the highest to the lowest, right? So obviously Cosmos had a ridiculously high token sale. It was like something like $200 million, which I think by today's standards would be somewhere up in the billion dollar type thing due to the fact that Bitcoin has you know gone up in value since then. So Cosmos is currently one of the biggest names in the interoperability race. Um, so you have the author of the Tendermint Byzantine Fault Tolerance Protocol uh, the, on board, right? So the Tendermint as an MS thesis uh, with the intent of creating an improved proof of stake protocol made kind of a big splash when it came out. Since then, Tendermint has been adopted by dozens of different projects as well. So Cosmos aims to become a hub or a nexus of a large number of projects. It achieves this by releasing a software development kit that promises high levels of scalability to blockchain projects. Um, so currently at the time of making this video, the actual functionality of the network is still soon. It's coming soon, right? But you know, what are you going to do? It hasn't even hit exchanges yet. Cosmos is being funded by a nonprofit registered, uh, company, by the way, in Switzerland, just to let you know, called the Interchain Foundation or ICF. So that's basically all we know about Cosmos, but that's one that hasn't come out yet. Another one that hasn't come out yet either is Polkadot. So Polkadot is associated with Gavin Wood, okay? He's one of the founders of Ethereum. So it makes sense that Polkadot, coming from an Ethereum developer, has a lot of focus on transferring smart contract data. Now, its mainnet is scheduled to launch in Q3 2019, and the tokens will not be tradable until then. So the structure of their ICO seems to indicate that they're really a lot more interested in the technology than they are in trying to make money. Kind of what I was saying about BlockNet earlier. You know, Polkadot comes across as a project that's focusing on the tech. They don't really care about the money, which is a good thing. I like that. So essentially, Polkadot is undoubtedly one of the forerunners in the list. So Solidity, we all know, has become something of a standard for smart contracts. Having strong links to uh, basically the Ethereum community, Polkadot is likely to have a share of Ethereum's first mover advantage. So that's definitely one to watch out for as well. Another one that we have is Quant Network. So they have an EU patent for an interchain communication protocol. Also, their, their platform, which you'll notice on their website, is called The Overledger. Quite a mysterious, intriguing name, right? So basically, like a lot of other projects that I mentioned here, they do appear to be highly qualified and very well connected as well. One positive of the Quant Network is that their developers have extensive cybersecurity background. So that is definitely a plus. This is crucial with an interchain protocol since the attack surface area will increase with interchain communication.
right? So that is that coming out of Quant. And the final project that I wanted to talk about is Block Collider. So they obviously had one of the lowest ICOs with, uh, I think they raised, I think it was like $7 million. So it claims to be different from the competition in that it has no actual validators. Validators essentially, guys, are witnesses who have to confirm the authenticity of transactions on various chains. Their white paper doesn't appear to have any kind of novel or unique or different ideas, but I think it's more of the philosophy that may win some supporters working towards decentralization in the future. So there might be a little bit of a downside to Block Collider. The team is relatively small. I don't really see a lot of other blockchain experience from the team, especially compared to some of the competition you know, obviously like the Interoperability Alliance and these other projects, Ethereum, you know, co-founders on board, et cetera. But, um, yeah, I mean, I still think that they have a potential to build, you know, a widespread adoption of, you know, interchain protocol connect connectivity. So yeah, Block Collider, let's not forget about them. They might be the new guys on the street, but that is the other one as well. So basically, guys, there's a lot of different projects that are trying to solve interoperability. Which ones will succeed, which ones won't, we don't really know 100% yet. We do have a lot of progress coming out of some of the higher cap ones that we've spoke about earlier, but we've yet to see what these ICOs that are currently coming out can provide as far as interoperability is concerned. What is the biggest problem moving forward? Well, when we think about the beginning of the internet and we think about the original TCP IP, right? There was a common interest among everybody that we need this standard protocol to work because we knew that when we built this underlying infrastructure for the internet as a whole, that literally everybody would win. It would make the internet as a whole more valuable, right? Well, with interoperability and projects, we see a lot of projects, they're on their main nets, they're doing their own thing, they're very just segregated, you know what I'm saying? And you see a lot of tribalism, right? So we may have difficulty moving forward as a lot of these projects really aren't working with each other. Although I will give credit to the Interoperability Alliance, they are, okay? But I think that that's one of the biggest issues that we're going to see moving forward. However, if we can find the time to work together to really try to understand the value of interoperability and why moving forward this is going to be absolutely necessary if we want the blockchain space to grow to the lengths that we really believe it will. And don't forget, guys, we have all this other t tech coming out as well, you know, with DAG ledgers and block lattice and all these different types of things, right? I mean, yeah, hash graph. So, there's going to eventually become a wall and we're going to have to find a way to all live happily under the same ecosystem in the crypto sphere with interoperability for everyone standing united. Okay, no, I don't know. Just having some fun at the end, guys. But yeah, let me know what you think about interoperability. Who are some of your favorite interoperability projects? Which ones do you think are going to succeed? Who do you think has the best advantage, whether it be team, tech, time in the space? Is there potential for collaborations among all of these projects? Do you think interoperability even matters anymore? I personally do, but let me know what you guys think about this in the description below. Drop a comment. Love to hear from you. And that being said, guys, thanks again for coming back to my channel. You guys are awesome. You know I love you. Everyone that's been mashing on the like button, subscribing. You guys are amazing. Uh, I get up and I do this every single day because of you. That being said, guys, my name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And peace out.